Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hello, everybody. I am Ross Morasso. Welcome back to the show and welcoming my guest today, Randy Swain, coachingforrelevance.com, the owner and founder of an executive coaching service. You can find him or email him at randy at coachingforrelevance.com and as the number four coaching for relevance in the email. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Randy, yeah. welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here and, and uh, happy holidays and uh, looking forward to the new year for, with everybody. So, Sure. Happy new year to you too. You know, as a life coach, you let's mm-hmm. talk about that for a second. You know, you an executive coach and all of that, you deal with goals. And so this is sort of like a uh, your tax season if you were an accountant, right? Everyone's trying <laughs> to set up new goals for themselves. So in the new year, what is it you would tell people about goal setting? Well, the, the big thing, I, it would rather than uh, necessarily tell them things, mm. I would ask them the right questions to help them really clarify what is it you're really looking to accomplish kind of thing. And um, and I know that uh, uh, there, there's a lot that can be wrapped around that. No two ways about it. But it's, uh, you know, very, you know, very few a lot of people in our society today have a tendency to just have this picture. I I just want that, but there's not a lot of clarity on what that really looks like to what point would they cross the line where it's not good to, to what point would they go? Yeah. You know, that's good. Or maybe it's even better than they envisioned initially. Are they aware of when that's the case and all that? And so uh, it it really has to uh, do with just kind of asking those right questions kind of questions and everything and i know um uh, in today's world at the beginning of a new year whenever you've crossed the threshold and are moving forward have you given any thought to that prior to the point where it's got to be done you know kind of thing then do you have an uh, access to those different steps in there and and i know one of the things that i just kind of uh mentioned um uh uh previously but i'll just kind of throw it out there real quick and it may have a few follow-on questions that'll be cool if anybody sends a question in or whatever but um uh actually i saw it on linkedin this morning and i didn't read the article because i didn't have the time to but Mm. it was a very interesting article it illustrated sort of this point i know last week when i was on we talked about are you asking yourselves and your team the right questions uh kind of thing and um the the basically the title of the argue talked about the key difference between innovation and maintenance of your team and it and it was interesting i didn't get a chance to read the article but what it sounded like in the title it sounded like it was talking that maintenance is more critical uh, and to there's a whole lot of questions that somebody could ask surrounding that. And it's, it's, it's one thing that um, uh, uh, is very common on a lot of people today uh, that if they, if you're, I know last week I mentioned, if you're asking a question that just talk tells your people to have a sense that they just want to know what the right academic answer that you want to hear about is, that's not going to get you where you want to go. And if, if if you think about it sort of either or, that it's either maintenance or innovation, guess what? That's an either or. It may not be all that. There's a hmm. whole spectrum in there. And are you know, you know, are there are there times where sometimes the maintenance and this degree of innovation has to happen? There may be some times when they are very aligned like this. And as a leader, do you have clarity on that? You have clarity on when those two are working together to make your team go way beyond what you thought was possible and stuff. And so those are just some interesting questions and a, and a, a, a kind of a good insight when you're talking about that. And I know that's even more critical. Um, uh, you know, I know the last time we were on here, uh, uh, Ross, you mentioned um, about uh, um, uh and sort of, uh, you know, being kind to your people and all that sort of stuff. And we mm-hmm. sort of talked about, you You brought up the idea of this 
struggling, challenging environment. And guess what? It's even more critical in there because if you're just going to either or, guess what? You're not getting it done. But if you have a sense in your vision where you can do this much and still employ this much innovation, it can prepare them so that when they get beyond the need for that immediate maintenance, maybe right now, all of a sudden that innovation can break free and and make some amazing things happen. So there's, it, I just found it interesting with that uh, 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 simple concept from the title of that article and everything, that when you're talking about uh, uh, leading your team in today's world, there's a lot with that. If if you're if it's very aligned with kind of like I say, what well, you and I talked about last time, and also uh, last week when I was on, uh, there's some aligned aspects to that. But uh, when you're leading your team, are you focusing them on just either or? Whenever things come up, are you thinking only either or, or do you have clarity on where we want to try to get? And at this point in our journey. What do we need to do to get us there? And you know what? Some of that may be some maintenance. But if you shut off the vision of the innovation just to do that, you're probably hurting yourself because the maintenance may be taking it from a point where you can't go in that direction anymore, possibly. It just depends on the situation and the facts that are involved and all that. But I found it very interesting that, um, you know, if, if you got – if 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 the leader finds themselves thinking strictly in just wrote academic superficial things, boy, they can really hurt their team and hurt the company and hurt themselves and their success. And it's, uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting perspective. You know, it's always uh, frustrating to talk to coaches such as yourself because, you know, in life, we just want to have the answers, (laughs) right? And, in this case, I'll call that a positive thing. <laughs> yes, it is a positive thing, you know, and every time I always keep thinking about, you know, peeling back an onion, you know, as you're talking here, just using your example of new outcomes or goals versus maintenance mm-hmm. of the team and the organization. And, and, and I say, which one should I do? And it sounds like your answer would be yes. And, you know, so it's like win, win, <laughs> multiple outcomes. You know, I like to say living in an and and world, you know, yeah. sometimes maybe new goals could actually be also satisfying the maintenance of your team, right? Like those who have ambition and want to be doing things. So that's right. How is it for leaders? What's a good way to start or keeping, you know, an eye on the metaphorical gauges? Like, how do you know if it's time for maintenance versus growth versus innovation? You know, and and, and what I would say on that is if I was coaching somebody that would list several questions that I would probably. Of course, it would. And one of the. (laughs) Of course it would. Yes. And and one of the big questions, though, and it's one thing that leaders have to be on the watch for mm-hmm. is at what point are you getting so stressed or busy that you don't have time to even think about what those questions are? Because if you talk about I know a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned caring mm-hmm. for your people and everything. You know what? If you if you um, uh, uh, you know, they're going to kind of lose sight of your commitment to them if you don't know you know if, if they're working for somebody that their boss doesn't know where to where to go that could be and stuff but if you uh sit there and, and have some clarity and you're thinking through one of the questions i would throw out to them okay what's standing in your way of you having an insight onto where that balance is well i don't know what it is with my people okay yeah so guess what what do you need to do with your people guess what you probably need to go connect with them you need to learn a little bit about their perspective, their experience right now. And if you're talking about maintenance, is it 100% maintenance or is it 12% maintenance? You know, and 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 and, and leaders have to kind of have a sort of a sense of that. Uh, and guess what? That changes in the scenario that you're in, because if you're in a struggling, challenging scenario, that could be different than if you're just kind of on the course that you're on and proceeding. And so... Uh, so how do leaders need to do that? They have to get a lot more comfortable with getting off of the rote academics. And, you know, one of the things, and, and, and you probably know this too, Ross, not saying that you do it, but just one thing that's common in our society is, and, and what I call, it's part of that dopamine fix. You know, dopamine is a chemical our brain releases to make us feel rewarded. And, and, it, and, and it's an aspect of, you know, we just want to be applauded for the answer that we gave. 
Now, whether it's really right, mm. whether it's possible, whether it's really going to get us where we want to go, who knows? How do you know? How do you know whether your team's even ready to do that yet and make that part of the journey successful? And so all of those are aspects. There's a, a lot of questions that could come up in there. But if the leader doesn't have an insight into his or her people and to what that looks like, then you really don't know what your team's like right now. And when you're talking about being a leader, uh, that's a key part of this whole aspect of, you know, uh, you know, knowing who your team is truly, being able to connect with them, being able to sense, okay, this is really where we are. I have some clarity on that now. Oh, okay, you know what? Yeah. You know what? Here's what we need. Here's the, the couple of steps we need to take. And I don't just mean go do this. What I mean is, Sometimes it may be making sure my team is prepared to go there. And it may be, you know, doing, it may be something simple as we were talking about a couple of weeks ago of really finding ways where I need to make sure my team feels that I care about them and I believe in them. And uh, so all of those are kind of wrapped up in there. And, and, and that sounds very you know, different and across the spectrum. And it is because guess what? Everybody you, de you know, everybody you lead, everybody that's on your team is a little bit different. You know, it seems like as uh, from the way I'm catching your vibe here is that the most effective way to coach or the best way for people maybe to get powerful results or lasting results is they kind of need to discover it for themselves, right? Which is probably why you're asking questions all the time. So inside of this though, and I always like to give, our listeners, some hints, uh, you know, <laughs> okay. as to what yeah. you do. Yeah. And so even if you wouldn't tell one of your clients or an organization or the, you know, the boss directly what was wrong, I'm sure as you're talking with um, your clients, you can start to get some idea in your own mind pretty quick of where you could probably point them to, or if you were going to tell them it just to say what you'd say. But so saying this another way, what would be in your mind, and then we can all, as our leaders of our own lives or companies, mm -hmm. what would be warning signs where you would say, if my day-to-day, -day, if mm -hmm. my mentality, if my team or conversations, bottom lines, what have you, seem to be doing X or are behaving in this way, mm -hmm. what would be a warning sign of saying, okay, you know, I think I might need to take, take a look at this? There, there's a couple of possibilities in that. And as, as somewhat crazy as this sounds, part of the warning sign is, uh, warning, warning sign is, yeah, part of the warning signs, yeah. you know, could, could be the nonverbal communication. What do you see in their body language? What do you see in the tone of their voice? What do you see in the look in their eyes as they're communicating? Uh, I, I shared this some time back, but I, and, and I can't remember if I shared it with you and stuff, but there was a lady that was a friend of mine. Uh, she's actually going to be on the documentary uh, that they're making for me to be published, but there, um, um, I was coaching her on uh, counseling, but using a good coaching perspective as she was counseling people and things like that. And um, uh, you, you some of the listeners may remember that um, she called me up and asked, uh, she didn't, I was coaching her and a, a mutual friend, you know, kind of thing that was in a different business area and stuff. And, um, but she called me and said, asked if I would be willing to get with her and coach a little bit individually. And I said, you bet. She said, I don't want to stop what we're doing there. And I said, yeah, we'll do that. And what was amazing is I sat down, I said, so what do you, uh, what do you hope to accomplish if we do this? And she talked for some of the listeners that have listened to the shows previously may remember this, but there, she talked for 20 minutes straight. Wow. But listening to her words, listening to what was coming out within about probably two minutes, I could tell that it was unmet expectations in the organization she was in. And I could, I could tell that, but you know what I did? I just let her talk because I knew she had to go there. And, and, and if, you know, if I just go, well, you know what, this is your problem. Guess what? That's sort of arrogant and it's not really leading. And, but what was amazing is she said, um, uh, it was uh, when she found out what the 
actual issue was, and it was more of in her faith picture of what she was doing because she worked for a faith-based organization. Okay. And, um, and what was amazing is she said, um, uh, at the end of the 20 minutes, I said, well, you've done a good job of laying out all your options and your, the pluses and minuses and all that. And I said, so I just got one question for you. Most of my clients, when I say that, they kind of go, because I know a good question's coming. And I said, what's it going to take for you to, because she was talking about, you know, how she was praying and all that kind of stuff. And I said, what's it going to take for you to stand up and be okay with whatever God leads you to on this? And she exploded into tears. And I mean, so much so her shoulders were doing this as she was crying. And and I let her go for about 20 seconds. And then I kind of just put my hand on her arm and I said, what are you experiencing right now? And she said, I realized something really um, embarrassing. And I said, what? And she said, I realized that's the question I've been running from for a long time. And I didn't even know it. Mm. And I said, what's it going to take for you to answer that question? And it turned around like that. I mean, it, it, it turned around that quick and, and the success in what she was doing in an organization and all that was like overnight. But, you know, how did I know that? First of all, I'd let her talk. I asked some great questions so that she could communicate. Uh, but I also sort of picked up on what she was saying and the meaning behind it. And I was picking up on the nonverbal communications as she communicated and all that. But that's one thing, knowing your people and being able to ask the right question and hearing what they're truly communicating is a big part of that. It's not just about pointing fingers and dictating and threatening and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and, and I think, you know, there was one that I shared Real Probably quick, Randy, I wanted to yeah, say ahead. for those of us who tuned in here uh, in the middle of this, I'm talking to you. Randy Swaim is the certified executive coach and founder of Coaching for Relevance. And we can find you at coachingforrelevance.com. You know, something that you're talking about sure. in all of this, it just seems to be this theme. You know, when you just use this story of this woman who you talked to before. Yeah. About internally, it seems like we're always resisting the answer. And I wonder how often if deep down we know what the answer is. And let me ask you, have you ever found a good leader who is willing to be vulnerable, really, really burned by being vulnerable? Or is vulnerability actually more of a strength that real leaders seem to have? Uh, I would say that it, it's sort of, uh, it, this is going to sound kind of crazy, but it's a little bit of a borderline. And what I mean by that is if, if you sound like you're just somebody who's given up because you got to feel like you just got to give it all away. You, okay. That's not being a leader, but mm. the point, but the point being when you're, when you're honest and you're modeling and you're showing your team a degree of honesty and all of that, that can click the team into real belief in you as a person. And so it, it's not like, uh, as, a, as much as I hate to say it, it's not either or, you know, on either side of the spectrum. But there are times when, you know, it, it's good to become s somewhat vulnerable. And if, if you think about it, part of leading your team is helping them think that they are the ones doing it. It's not you doing it. And there's a sense of that where, it sort of comes across as a slight thing of being vulnerable. It's like, you know what? I believe in you guys and this is your success. You know, um, you know, there are times when you got to step out in front and kind of show them the way a little bit. Uh, I know in the military, obviously, which is a big part of my background, guess what? There's times on the battlefield, but the leaders got to do that. And, um, but, uh, if, if the if the team is struggling with something because they don't believe it or because they're not sure or don't have clarity, the leaders needs to step up and kind of show that and start modeling that and start walking in the direction so they'll follow or something like that. But there's other times, too, where you really encourage your team such that, you know what, this is your success. You get the applause out of this. You're going to do great things with this. And it's not just calling attention sort of to myself. There is a sense of vulnerability there where you got to open yourself a little bit so that they feel like they got the credit and they've got the belief 
uh, you've got belief in them and and you're not trying to call the attention to yourself kind of thing and there's there's uh you know the vulnerability that could be a whole spectrum of possibilities in there but there is a degree in there where the leader has to be to a certain uh, a degree okay with that and and uh it doesn't mean you're just going to show yourself to be a coward and just cry and you know kind of go like this you know in front of your people that's not being a leader but to a certain extent where you are um letting them know that it's not about you it's about us together well i like what you're saying you know because it's it's if you stick with it's about being honest you know Mm -hmm. maybe honesty in the moment is strength maybe it is vulnerability or whatever but it's not about those other parts it's about whatever would be required to authentically and honestly have this conversation at that moment with your team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that is a key part of it. And if you think about it, that's part of modeling leadership. Because if you're doing that and the team begins to get comfortable with the true honesty that's involved, they're going to be honest with each other. And there and and there's a degree where that can build the synergy in your team a lot. And so it so it really is. Um, uh, I mean, that could be an hour long conversation for sure, but it, it's a great point that you brought up uh, because this aspect of uh, that vulnerability versus the arrogance. If you're coming across as arrogance and I'm all that, aren't you glad you're on my team and all that kind of stuff? Mm. Guess what? People aren't going to believe in you. Sorry, people aren't going to believe in you because that comes across as I'm trying to tell you all about myself. And that means there's something down here. I don't believe I'm trying to cover that up. You know what I mean on that? And, and, but, but if I can come across as a true leader and I could come across and say, you know what, we all have maybe some concerns. I get that, but you know what, we can all get there and you know, can't get there individually. But you know what? None of us are good to get there all by ourselves, you know, kind of thing. But you know what? As a team, man, we can really take it through the roof kind of thing. And so that aspect of this is just a very key part of what you're talking about. And it really is um, this whole aspect. And when you're talking about just the different aspects, like I say, the innovation versus the maintenance, but the, the caring for them versus let's go run some risk here kind of thing or all of that. That can all depend on the situation that you're in. But a true leader understands how you help develop all of that capability within your team so that at the point of contact, when you got to go there, they're ready. And that's a that's a huge part, huge part of it. Is it hard for you to get leaders in the space to or you? Cause you had commented, and I, I can totally see the value in this mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. letting your team know that the successes that you that they're having is their success. And so mm-hmm. dealing with leaders to be able to let go of the need to take that credit, mm-hmm. you know, is that something that you have to struggle with, with some people that you're coaching? Uh, I will say this, that that it's something that's a little bit unique from the uh, old school way of doing things and everything. But uh, but I will say that when leaders get a sense for what that's really like, boy, I'll tell you what, they wouldn't want it any other way. And I'll just kind of share this very quickly with you. When I was the uh, site manager at Griffiths Air Force Base, the uh, chief maintenance guy that we had, as I jokingly say, you would have thought he came right out of an old uh, sailing ship thing because everything about his look his beard and just kind of the way he was he looked like he came off of a captain of some sailing ship (laughs) somewhere whatever you know kind of thing and but this one the manager before me you know didn't really speak highly of him in fact when i was chosen to replace that manager i was asked if i was uh be okay with him being the senior uh maintenance guy and i looked at him i said i i can put up with you i think you can put up with me right (laughs) <laughs> and he goes, yeah. But I said, we're good. <laughs> yeah, kind of thing. And, but one of the things that I did is there was a time where I um, uh, wrote a letter. We were getting ready to go fly and he was out at the airplane and I walked out and I handed him a, a letter that I had written. And I said, Bill, let me uh, let you read this. What do you think about this? And he read it and he goes, who is this? 
I said, Bill, that's you. This is the employee of the month letter that I'm writing to recommend you for the employee of the month for the whole company. Mm. I'm going to be mailing. I'm going to be sending it down to headquarters tomorrow. I said, what do you think of this? He goes, really? I went, yeah. And he looked at me and he said, well, when did I do this? Because it's talked about he represented the company to a news thing. And I said, um, you remember that time where right after we took off, you said a reporter came up and was asking you about us? He said, yeah. I said, that's when you did that. And he never thought anybody would have ever remembered that. But the fact that just the fact that I remembered it said a lot. And what was amazing is he was uh, chosen as the employee of the month. And uh, everybody was in our uh, office area. And I called everybody in and I called him in. And we just did like a not more than a five minute thing, but it's just, I announced it and I gave him the certificate for employee of the month. But then he was also um, accepted as the employee of the quarter for the company. And so, but, you know, just like I say, when you get off of the idea that it's just all about you and directing people, but you connect with people, even the people that maybe some others think, why are they doing this? You know, kind of thing. And you get them to believe. And, um, and show that you're observing them and you're aware of all they're doing and everything. Uh, you know, that can be huge, but you know what? That's a key aspect that leaders have to understand. It's not about you. It's not about you just telling people what to do. It's connecting with them in such a way. Mm. And guess what? If you do that, you're going to need less maintenance. There's a lot of people that think that that is maintenance. I would say that's connecting. And if you got somebody that's really been beat down, yeah, maybe some maintenance, but but that there, there's a lot of that that's sort of wrapped up in that whole concept, and it's uh, it's something that leaders truly need to understand. It's not just managing something, but it's really developing your leader leader ability. So it, it was just quite, kind of an interesting point with what you said. Thank you for raising that. So you're greasing the wheels on a day to day basis, and you never have to worry about the engine rebuild. <laughs> you know what? That's a good way to put it. I got to tell you, that is a great way to put it. Because you know what? If the wheels are ready to go and all that, all you got to do is put some gas in the engine and, and it goes. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. All right, Randy Swain, we only got a couple of minutes left. So tell everybody where they can find you, look you up and engage with you. Sounds good. Anytime. I'll, uh, uh, you can check out my website. It's uh, like you said, it's coaching for And uh, down there at the bottom of the uh, homepage, it's got my uh, uh, cell phone, my email. Uh, you don't have to worry about me giving you big sales pitches, uh, cause I don't do sales calls, but if you, if you have a need, we'll come up with something, but, uh, uh, uh I welcome just having a conversation and, uh, getting to know people. And, what should people uh, search for you on YouTube? I I've seen you have videos on there. What's a good way to uh, find your videos? Uh, well, you can go on my YouTube channel. Um, and, um, it's, uh, it's got a number of short videos on it, but it's also got recordings of these shows that we've done uh, and it's coaching and for relevance so that we die search for that on youtube it, to find it's your actually it, it's actually uh, uh, <laughs> i have to go back and double check it but it's uh uh you could check randy swain more coaching for relevance it's it's either one should take it there on youtube all right beautiful and that's randy swain with an m as in mary s-w-a-i-m -M. randy yeah. always good to talk to you um, thank you everybody else randy a happy new year to you i'm sure we'll be talking again i cannot wait and thank you all for tuning in, I'm Ross Barrasso. Until next time. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network.